Welcome to the whole show once again. I'm mm -hmm. pleased to welcome Nana <laughs> Adumako, the legend, back to the studio. Thank and you. And welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, today marks a day um, um, of sending Ebony home. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have to say to the family? Well, um, it's a very sad and uh, a bereaved for, I mean, a moment for all of us. Sure. Uh, I will just seize this opportunity to extend my deepest uh, you know, condolences to the family. Yeah. And to Ghana as a whole too, because uh, the, the family have lost, but Ghana has also lost the sure. most. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, this girl was actually portraying our country's culture beyond boundaries, and the way she was and you know, excelling, she was really going to go far. But unfortunately, Ghana have lost this very wonderful, you know, up and coming singer. And the family have also lost. So my, my, I mean, my condolences goes to the family sure. and then to Ghana as right. well. Um, not just Ebony. Mm. I mean, you also recently lost Arama Bedu, um, probably one of your oldest friends. Yes. Um, I'm sure it will be a great privilege to mm -hmm. also extend your warm condolences to the family. Definitely. Yeah, Rama Bedu has been a sister to me, an elder sister to me. Uh, in fact, uh, Ghana have lost. She's one of the pioneers, Hala pioneers, who have really, you know, projected, you know, our female singers, you know, in the country. Uh, she's done her part, but unfortunately, well, there's a time that everything has to come to an end. Right. I think uh, she's also gone, and uh, my condolences goes to the family and my nephews, all the children who have called me uncle since they were kids. You know, Reverend Badu has been a, a sister, not only as a, a you know, co-musician, but actually he has been a, a family member and part of my life as well. So with time, I think we're going to come to that segment. So my condolences goes to Rama Badu's family as well. Talking about Rama Badu, um, I'm, I'm sure she passed away a couple of weeks, weeks, ago, weeks ago, months ago, months yeah. ago, yeah. Um, and she was sent off uh, weeks ago. Yes. Um, hardly did you hear anything about her. I mean, is there something you want to say to the government or Musica for not probably paying adequate sort of tribute to legend alike? I mean, you can see mm. all over is Ebony, mm -hmm. but very little has been even given to a, a legend like Arama Badu. Like Arama Badu, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you've rightly mentioned. Well, uh, I, I'm not in the position to some sort of advise or tell anybody what to do. But I think uh, as a country, uh, whatever Arama Badu did musically to our country is not a hidden secret. Right. We all know her, her hit single song like Midofwa Dada, in particular. Right. Right. It's, I mean, it's, been, it's an evergreen song that can never be forgotten in the history of Ghana's music. Right. So I think uh, the projection should have been a bit bigger than, well. What, what at all, if any, um, have you, legends, done to Ghanaian music industry? <laughs> I can name, uh, it's not just a remember that that was, uh, I mean, uh, is it, uh, what's his name again? Many more. Many, many, many others. Yes. Um, Akwabua. Namasta Akwabua. Akwabua. Exactly. Yeah, he is one of the big, 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 big pioneers. Yes, they just nobody talks about about, about them. And so what 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 is going on? Do you think you have something against, or they have something against your your sort of? Mm, I can't agent. say they have something against us. But, but why the lack? Of well, respect that should go beyond my, you know, let's say, or Francis. You are, you rightly said about like I remember, but do you see these people have contributed massively to the, you know, the projection of our culture into the world, you know, so they mustn't be simply be forgotten like that, right. you know. There should be something. There should have been something. Well, for whatever reason why these things haven't existed, well, uh, I'm not in the administration to say much, right. but as a musician myself, I'm thinking of what have happened to the first one that went. So maybe after I'm gone as well, <laughs> what is going to happen? <laughs> well, I we are sure you that you're not going anywhere. And well, I'm sure there'll be a who great knows? To one yourself. day we are no, all bound to, to go. go. Thank you very much. So, I mean, a lot of people are buying caskets and 
paying for the food. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, it sometimes baffles me why we don't pay mm. a, a lot of respect to the living than to the dead. Mm. I mean, a lot of people said <laughs> bad things about this lady, but yeah. Mm. Um, Nana, last interview, you made mention of Nana Mpadu, yes. uh, your hero, mm. your mentor, mm. um, but you forgot Smart in Cancer because I'm sure he was once a producer in your life career. Definitely. Yes, thank you very much for bringing this uh, uh, question up. And before I go to that, I would like to not forget about our grandfather of music as well, C.K. Man. Okay, so today you're going to have that opportunity to Please. say. Yes, excuse me to, <laughs> to mention not to. Whoever you want to mention, okay. Please, right. Thank you very much for okay. giving me the opportunity please, please once do. again to yes. say and I render my condolences as well to the family of C.K. Man, our grandfather of music. Sure. Uh, whom we all and myself also listened to. So many Ghanaians, well, uh, musicians in general, have profited from this kind of uh, legends who have lived in front of us before we all started. And he's uh, currently uh, uh, lying in, uh, you know, uh, you know, in a, a bad position. So, like we all said, uh, we have to render the condolences to the family and uh, to the, the the Ghanaian country uh, as a whole because we've lost a big, one of the big, mighty, you know. No trees, which is CK man. Uh, if you're talking about high life, the existence, well, mm -hmm. we shouldn't forget somebody like CK man and uh, mm -hmm. Papa Yangsen who also passed uh, recently. So my condolences goes to both uh, Papa Yangsen and uh, CK man's family as well. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> on the segment mm -hmm. of us, uh, Martin Kaza, as you rightly mentioned, okay. yes, uh, on the first episode, uh, that skipped. Uh, you know, slightly my mind for not bringing that, but I'm, I'm very happy you've mentioned it. Uh, it's something that I did and I, I regretted from that day till now that I'm talking to you. It's something I shouldn't have done, but I did. And I, I, I regretted, and I think I mentioned it to Nana even along the line. And he's, Nanam Padu. Nanam Padu, yes. Okay, right. Uh, he discovered me, like I've told you before. Uh, while I was singing my repertoires and directed me to Mr. Pra, leader of the Gapophone Records. Uh, demos were made on cassette and I presented it to Mr. Pra and he was really getting ready to get me ready with my band, the Blackberries, to go to the studio to record my songs. Uh, along the line, uh, we had to adore the Smart and Cancer and his band, the Sun Sun Mystic Band. I think it was their first or the second anniversary. So we, the Black Bearers Band, had to play alongside with Smart and Kansa and his band at Tito okay. Gardens. Right. So when I started singing my repertoire with my band, Smart listened and he heard the songs and he said, wow. So Kwame, who made these songs? Mm -hmm. And I said, our leader, then mm -hmm. Sergeant Joe Bosman, told mm -hmm. him it's his compositions that we are playing so wow so are you have you made any you know provisions to record these songs then i told my dad okay we are playing so when we finish uh i'll tell you what i've been going on so mm. after i met him and i told him nanam padu has already advised me and directed me to see mr pra gapophone records to record these songs for me then smart said oh no i am recently now currently uh on the happy bird uh, records label okay. which uh, for dk nyako and sons records so they are producing my song they are very good so i think i can get you a better deal with the happy bird than a uh, gapo phone i'm already in the scene yes so you are now up and coming so i can direct you to the best place so why not because martin ganza was a, a very big star that time in the country i was just an up and coming right so, uh, uh, just let's, let's skip that area yes. for a bit. What exactly did he do to you? Well, uh, because in terms of produ production, yes. at some point you were in, probably in, 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 in jail. He, he became, he beca in jail. okay, let me just yeah. go to, he became a producer. So I boycotted the, the idea of Nanam Perdue, you know, directing me to record with Gapo Phone right. and followed Smart and Kansa and he introduced me to the Happy Bed. Okay. So Mr. Peter 
who, who was the director of the Happy Bear at that time, right. was very happy to see Smart bringing somebody like me and recommending me to them to record. So he started the finance and arrangements for me to go to studio to record. Everything was done. So Smart and Cancer became the producer. I wrote and arranged and sang all my songs. The only person I used in Sun Sun Band to back my song was Becky B. Okay. He helped me in the choral singing. Right. So, uh, unfortunately, when the album came out, I was arrested. That is Kanamai. 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 I recorded all the songs at a go, but you know, six of them came, and then the four were reserved for the second album. So he was the producer of the album. Uh, I had been arrested when the album came out. Right. So the finance, every money that was meant to come to me, was going to Smart and Cancer. What, was he an executive producer or was he just a producer? He was just a producer. producer. So he is, there is he, no point did he write any song? Nothing. He was not part of the songwriting mm, process at all? Never. He because is, it's, it's, you know, there are various stories going yes. on that he wrote almost all the kind of... No, 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 no. He played no role. He can... The existing Lord is witnessing and hearing what I'm saying, and the bandsmen of the Blackberry, oh. some only one or two of them are dead. The rest are living. I can direct you to contact all members of Blackberry's band who are living. That if Smart and Cancer did anything with my music, musically it's my my music, my arrangement. I mean, I was musically prepared before I started singing, so nobody could have written, done nothing for me to sing. No, the, I'm sure. I'm sure. Probably behind the scenes, when you came on the first interview, he would have probably thought you mentioned his name in terms of even thanking him. Well, because he kind of did, at some point, uh, would you owe him any gratitude for helping you at all when you were in prison? I regret. You still maintain my love. I regret for. Not listening to Nanam Perdu and then skipping to go behind Martin Kaza because he ripped me off. Right. I did not get one farthing from the album Kanyamaya that Ghanaians had from that uh, uh, Martin Kaza guy because he told the uh, chief executive producer, Mr. D. K. Nyako San Peter Nyako, that it was his Martin Kaza who introduced me to him and the company. So if there is anything to do with money, it is his Martin Kansa that Peter must give the money to, but not me. So, but uh, this man was really fumbled. So, oh, really? Okay, I didn't know somebody like Adma so you mm. brought him. So yeah. I don't know the arrangements you've made with him to say that I shouldn't give him money, but yeah. every money should be channeled through you. So, okay. Right. He started giving every money to Martin Kansa. I was in jail. So, in fact, uh, every effort, to get what was coming, uh, to, to get what I was due, yeah. failed because I sent my mother and my sister to Smart and Cancer to, because they had my music playing. Where right. is the money going? So I told my sister, yeah, bro, he's dead now, but my mother was also dead, to go to Smart and Cancer to say that, okay, the money that uh, Mr. Nyako has given to him, my part must be given to me. Smart and Cancer told my sister, and I swear to God and everything that I'm saying, Smart told my sister that, Yabrefi, to come and tell me why I was in jail. In that, exile. But then I was, was he started in jail before, before I even went, went into exile. exile. Okay. That if he, Smart and Kanta, owes me any money, I, Nyameche, should come and get my money from him, he, Smart and Kanta, because he doesn't know my sisters. Two times they came to tell me why I was in jail, and my mother said, Kwame, don't go after this. Have you have you met him afterwards? Never. You've never heard of him. Never. You've never spoken to him. Never. Right. Never. 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 So, in fact, I forgot about it. Mm. And Peter Nyako, that man came also to see me while I was in detention at Maneva Base to tell me exactly what Martin Kansa has told him that, Kwame, we are very sorry your album has become a hit. Money is coming, but smart. Is claiming everything that we supposed to be giving to you. He doesn't want us to give anything to you or your family because he said I Nyamicha wouldn't have known them if not because of his Martin Kansa. So the, every money was given to him. Every money that came out of that album went to Martin Kansa. So when I went, I had a lucky 
to escape into exile, Mr. Peter heard about me and he came to me in Ivory Coast. That is where I had the first money from the album. He gave me 10,000 CFA. If Mr. Peter Nyako is alive, if you go to Ghana, I'll direct you to go and see him. And equivalents in cities at the time? Oh, those that? days, let's say it was big money, about 50 million, okay. or about 5 million at that time. time. 10,000 okay. CFA at that time was about 5 million, which was, was big money. So she said, Nyamiche, but I it was little. It was little as compared well, as, to the, as a little. The, the revenue thing that I as compared from the album. what he has given to Smart. He was just giving me that token, and to to tell me he is innocent about whatever is happening to my money, mm -hmm. because Smart has stopped him from mm -hmm. giving anything to me or my relatives, if not to his Smart and Cancer. In fact, he gave me that money and said I shouldn't even let Smart and Cancer know because he knows if Smart knows that he has given me one penny. He know his, Peter Nyako's life was going to be endangered. I said, oh, is it, has it gone that bad? Why, why that betrayal? Why? That is the question I should ask you now and then if Smart is alive listening okay. to me, yeah. why he did that to me. Okay. Knowing very well I've gone into this Problem issues, yeah. issue and he was to, detained to be the one to and help you, you at this point. luckily you led me to this company and the album has become a hit money is coming and you denied me what I was due to be honest I didn't know why this guy did this to me but God is a merciful one God is a merciful one yes indeed. so uh, when I reached the records and I re re registered the songs I, I wasn't expected I could get anything, anything out, that of it. out of it so the money I started getting from the Ivory Coast before I even went into, you know, Europe, I was surprised. So God did uh, yeah, what no, I was supposed to, you know. But I, you know one thing I keep saying to myself, and like you said on the other show, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what people think of Nana Ampadu, no. you still adore him and you still oh. give him a lot of credit. Out of all these issues, the mm -hmm. journey, mm -hmm. the, uh, some of the good things he's done in your life. Yes. He never at any point came out mm. to speak boldly, profoundly, that he probably assisted you. No. And, and that is why you speak so highly of him. I speak so highly, and I, I say, the, besides God, I owe my life to Ojodufu Nana Kwame Ampadu. Because he really, you know, just kept me in his bosom like his own son or child yeah. that I'm living today. Getting back to your imprisonment, yes, when you were in jail, yes. where was Nanam Padu at the time? Was he was he still in, 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 in you know probably in membership with the PNDC at the time? Uh, but then, uh, well, Nana was actively you know uh, in music. He was right. very popular at that time. At one, at he was he was still at his peak at the time. Okay, uh, and uh, but Nana didn't come to visit me in jail. But uh, when I had the opportunity to escape, the whole thing, till I remember this place, to Nanam, his place. Right. No. So, so he, he was probably not involved in any of these things. No, okay. no, 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 right. no. It, we, will talk, we will talk more about Nanam Padu All right. and probably some of your escape routes yes. and how yes. the whole process um, was All right. taken after the break. We see you back. All right. Thank you, sir. Welcome back once again. Just before the break, yeah. Nana, we were just about to talk, mm -hmm. talk about your escape yes. into exile. Yes. You were formerly yes. placed in the castle yes. where you were being probably sentenced. Yes. And they transferred to the naval base. Base in for, Tema, yes. For, for your life sentence. Yes. What happened? There. Well, <clears throat> uh, like uh, I said at the other time, um, it was an indefinite detention okay. at the naval base. Right. So like I told you in the early segment that uh, these guys were preparing to mass execute us, to kill us. Uh, God being so good, one of them you know, pulled out to give the information to our brothers who were outside. And then eventually the message got to us so that uh, if we could not escape from the jail by the 21st of June, 
they have decided to kill all of us. That's 21st of June, 1983. Yes. So they told, we started really planning. So they, it's like all of us who had been detained managed to get the information that if we did not do something to get out of the jail, Rollins and his administration were going to kill all of us. So, in fact, uh, that 19th June was uh, a date that was decided that we must come what may get out. Okay. So we managed, so, uh, we have empowered the people who were taking care of us at another pace, who, those of us who were there. And then the, the others in the other uh, centers of the prisons also managed to get out, come what may. So in fact, um, when we got out, I was moving with one uh, Francis Atos, who, who was our precautionist, my senior in the army and then in the band. Kwame Atta and George Ousu. George Ousu went his way, but myself and uh, Kwame Atta moved together. So from the naval base, in fact, he asked me, Kwame, what are we going to do? I said, well, now we are running for our lives. So... Uh, no, no, just, just before you get there. Yeah. How did you escape? We, what, what was the, because in, well, in, in, as, as in soldiers, prison, yeah, as soldiers, you know, didn't have you imagine, ammunition. yes, somebody, uh, I've told you that besides the two days' time, I'm going to kill you, right? Somebody have planned outside, okay, without your knowledge that is, you are going to be killed, and luckily, you happen to hear the information. What will you do? I, I mean, that is the same question. <laughs> You, you, I'm, so how so we you, planned. Because without any, yes, give us the plan. So uh, we in brief. So, how did you do it? Because knowing well, you're going to die. Yes, but the the the, the, the naval base soldiers and then the the rolling security who were outside the gate didn't know we were planning to get out. So on the Sunday about nine o'clock, when because every morning they come to open the gate for. So when they came, as soldiers we did what we had to do, overpowered the, 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 the provost who were in charge of us, took the, the keys, because he opens the, 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 the guard room for us to, because we, 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 we ease ourselves, we urinate and go to the toilet My and they been inside there. So every morning they come and open us. So they didn't know we were going to break the jail. So the moment he entered in, we had to you know, disarm him and hands, hang, hands off him. We didn't kill him, that we, ha we had to go. So we had to give up. So we broke the armory with two guns. Then we started fighting to get out. We, we, well, there was a fight between us and the, those who were outside the gate when they saw that uh, something was going in there. So some people died. So we fought. Like in the course, I was wounded as well. Okay. How many people did you kill? <laughs> well, well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I, 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 you were just a musician I, I at the time. So, I, 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 well, a musician you, coming out of jail. Yeah. A, a musician who, who, who Rollins and his administrators have planned to kill. Right. So this guy was def, desperate to run for his life. But you managed to kill some. Well, we were about eight, ten soldiers detained in that guard room. So everybody was fighting. Firing. So whoever's right. bullet killed who? I'm sure I you, killed. I, you killed. You killed. You killed. Well, well, couple. they tried to kill us. So okay. why don't you also? So you're only ten that managed to break jail. No, no, no. In that Temanava base, okay. it was ten of us. Right. There, from from the uh, PNDC has kept us ten of us there. At the Nava base. At the Nava right. base. So in the various centers, uh, prisons in Ghana, we were all, well over two or two three hundred, hundred, hundred soldiers. soldiers. From the number of ways. So you, the 10 of you, managed to help the rest? No. The, so the, the, the plan was there. We got out. So it, it was a run for your life. So the rest of them in the jail sentences also, I mean, everybody has planned to get out. So from Nava Base, uh, from uh, uh, Osha Ford, James Ford, and Sawam, all soldiers, um, uh, uh, I mean, civilian, uh, you know, detainees who were there by the grace of the soldiers, they all got the chance to escape. So how they managed to get out individually from their jails, well, in case you happen to meet some of them, they will tell their story. But mm -hmm. from, I will tell it from Naval Base, where I broke out, you know, jail with my, the ton of us, so which I cannot mention all of them. But mm -hmm. uh, myself, Kwame Atta, Francis, 
Francis Ousu, George Ousu, Baba Sewiba, Tahiru Senior and Junior, and Amadu. Yes, a lot of soldiers were there. So we managed to get out. And then when we got out from the naval base, well, we spread. So I went with Kwame Atta, we moved together. Mm -hmm. the, my, my uncle who, who is here in the United Kingdom, like I told you, with time, probably you're going to meet him. Sure. So we moved from the Nava base, we moved through bushes, and we got to the Bema camp. When we went to the Bema camp, uh, we went to our leader, who was then uh, Slim Young, he's, he's dead as well. Uh, was it through the... Process? No, no, no. He, okay. he came into ex, uh, well, exile, exile as well. Or, so or, he died or, in Austria. Okay. Uh, so when we got into the Gonda barracks, but then, uh, like the counter was, let's take it, it was a, we broke jail, but the, the PNDC took it to be a coup d'etat against them. But they would not mention that they were planning to kill us. That's why we forced to get out. That yeah. was not <laughs> Because I think from the previous uh, episode, we had various feedbacks that. Yeah. The, the 10 of you, I mean, uh, I mean uh, I, I, there were a whole lot of people listed yes. at Debuga. They classified you guys as criminals, well. that you attempted a coup in 1983. Um, and okay, you we, are just we, making we, us we, aware we, that that is a... No, a no, no. We, 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 are, we were not criminals. Like I told you from the beginning, I'm a musician, but I'm a soldier. Uh, Lance Corporal, uh, Corporal Debuga who I know is the architect that PNDC used to recruit everybody that took part in the record regiment. Because it's true, and then we got that I got to know something was going to happen. And my platoon mate called Ajikum, he also came to tell me that this is what uh, Rollins have tasked somebody to recruit them, to tell them, blah, 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 that Liman was this and that. So they wanted to task me, I think I've told you in the other episode. Yeah, of course. Which I denied, I refused, I wouldn't take part, but I wouldn't betray them, and it happened. So Adabuga is a point, first point, that PNDC and Rollins shouldn't have been ungrateful to. Because this is the boy who even carried Rollins in his... But you see, when you say... Um, we were not criminals. Yeah, when you say they shouldn't We were be running for to, our lives. Yeah, you mm -hmm. should, if you say they shouldn't be ungrateful to... At, at any point, would you condemn the actions of Adabuga? No. You because they arrested him. But the he, PNDC he, was trying to kill him. He structured him. the whole coup. He, he helped Rollins 31st coup to be successful. So we wouldn't give credit to Rollins, but we shouldn't give credit to Adebu Yes, it was a constituted government. That is where I had my doubt to say we were, that, we were young at that time, and why should we overthrow the man? And they told me their reasons, which I think I wouldn't have to elaborate. Yeah. Why they think uh, they have to overthrow Liman, and if I will be ready to capture Liman with my Francis Atewusu, if he comes here, he will tell you, uh, or shoot him, probably. But actually, they had wanted to capture, if Liman come to dance to our music at the Air Force uh, officers, maybe we should capture him so that he go and make an announcement for mm -hmm. whatever announcement Rollins had for him. I don't know. Okay. He will tell Ghanaians why right. and his intentions or why he had to destroy Le Mans government, Thank which you. is a secret we all know what he told to convince Adebuga and the rest to take part. But we were young boys at that time. So you come to tell us something, oh, we are surprised we would do it. And we did it for nothing. So this boy, you tried to kill this boy and we protested against why you want to kill somebody we know brought you to power. And then is it, the is rest... It, is it not just because probably um, you you got the rest of you, uh, Adebu guy yourself and mm. the, the rest, mm. got to understand that probably you were misled? We were misled, the coup, yes. For the coup. And as such, mm. there was a re re rebellion against Rollins government or the PNDC government at the time? Would no, there wasn't a rebellion that? against PNDC. At that time, the whole problem why I got involved started when you were the whole to... Reiki realized that Adebuga has been arrested by the PNDC. That's where the trouble started. So all of us in the Reiki regiment... Weren't you all shocked? Um, we were for, shocked for, to for... hear Adebuga being arrested. For what reason has he been arrested? But he, he, he planned the whole coup. He planned the whole coup. I can so say why that. were you surprised to we... see him arrested? So by that, the very person. That is the question. That is what we didn't understand. Should he, should he have not been arrested 
Um, would you all be surprised? What do you uh, think would uh, have happened uh, if, he if, had, uh, if, if he had not been arrested? I know if Adebuka had not been arrested by the PNDC, Rollins and his Chikata and his administration, I don't think this trouble of me and others getting involved would have come in. Well, they had other do issues. Do you think there would have been a smooth transition or governance? Well, I wasn't concerned and I wasn't interested in the political issues. Did you believe they could actually run the country? The, I mean, from what you were saying, you were young guys. Uh, I questioned them that we, we were all in our 20s at that time. I questioned. Adabuga was much younger. Okay. Ajekum was my age group. So I asked them when they contacted me, said, what do you think we as young boys like that can do for a country like this? Can we, we have, we are not even responsible. How can we get involved of a whole nation's administration? Well, they had been influenced and the focus was they have to get rid of Liman. So well, they had to go on and do it. Well, they are my friends. I didn't betray them. It became successful. And this person who told us, and help these people to come to power. They tried to kill. We protested, and they have to condemn all of us to death. So, well, that is how, I mean, it started. So, in fact, when we broke the jail, well, there are various prison centers in Ghana that, you know, they spread all of us. Some people were in Sawam, some people were in Jamestown, Osha Fort, all over the country. Some people were at the BNI. Sergeant Laura Akatapora was detained at the BNI. So, People uh, were I mean, dispersed at you know different you know, places. Were, were civilians in this process? Yes. Did civilians help the process of the breakthrough because yeah, yeah, question, yeah, yeah. the ten of you managed to escape the Naval base. Yes. The other prisons. I mean, how did they? So get when to know? when people uh, at Adabuga and the rest broke uh, from the, their point, they had some ammo cars and they helped other centers. They went to Nsawam. They went to. Uh, the James Ford the, the, to help the others to come out, you know. So, but we from another base, we didn't go that far because my focus was to get out of the country. So, Kwameta, my uncle, whom I took to be when I entered the band, was I took him like an uncle because he was a, he was you know a grown up man in the band. So I took him like an uncle and an advisor. So I said, Ofa, let us run for our lives. He said, Okay, Kwame Yonko, Nyekwe. So we went to the Gonda Brothers, we saw Slim Young, and they said, Kwame, it's not safe for you to guys to come home now, so please go somewhere. So I just said, Kwame, I said, okay, my sister is a Ramabadu. Okay. I know where she lives, mm -hmm. in Medina. So oh, Gonda Barracks to Medina, how are we going we to, to go there? It. Yeah. I said, Kwame, Yanko. So fortunately, when we broke the jail and we entered the armory at Nava Base, I had, there was a compass. I took the compass with me. So I set it to the direction of Medina. I know where Ramabadu lives. So I said, she said, where were we going? I said, Atta, let's go to my sister. And Kwame Atta is a twin. Her twin sister, his twin sister was also living at Medina. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't have just go, gone straight to the sister. So I said, okay, let's go to Ramabadu. Mm -hmm. She's my, my sister. If he sees us, he will welcome us. We went to her house. She was surprised to see me because she knows I am in jail. And she's heard announcement going on. You know, so what is happening? So I told her, I said, Ra, this is what the PNDC guys intended to do to us. They were preparing to kill all of us. Right. But we have managed to break jail. So in fact, uh, we're looking for a place to you know, hide or stay and reorganize ourselves. So while we were there, uh, Rama Badu, uh, Kwame Ata sent one of Rama Badu's sister, uh, Badu's children, to her twin sister, because she was living at Medina. So he indicated that one of the child to go there. Before you can run, you need to, some money or whatever. Right. Before you, so the, the the idea was to get out of Ghana. Mm -hmm. So while in Rama Badu's house, I sent uh, one of his sons. They had two sons, Caesar and Anakwame. They all used to come to me at the Gonda Barracks because they called me uncle. Okay. So I told her, okay, uh, him that, please, Kwame, go to uh, Emilia. God, uh, I was then staying with Emilia. I said, what about you? Okay. I need my passport and there are some money mm -hmm. in my room. So I need some money mm -hmm. to put on me so that if we start to run away, there will be money on us. Mm -hmm. 
So this boy, Nana Kwame, went to the Gonda barracks. And some of the soldiers, including two musicians who I played the band with, whose name I would not like to mention. Okay. One of them lived directly on top of me and one was adjacent to me. Mm -hmm. Not knowing when this boy went to my place at the Gonda barracks mm -hmm. to collect my passport and the money, mm -hmm. the musicians saw this boy because they know him, Nana Kwame, who was a very, you know, about 10 or 11 years old at that time, but very intelligent boy. They're so, very close friends, other musicians. M musicians who I recorded with, who I've, I've been playing with, they saw this boy and they had their suspicions that, because that time I've been, they, they were announcing my name on the radio, mm -hmm. because we have escaped. And uh, Kosiga has come to make a counter announcement on the, on the radio. Mm -hmm. So my name was being mentioned okay. as a wanted person. Okay. So when they saw this boy mm -hmm. gone to my place, they informed the ops room that uh, a Ramabadu's son, whom they know it's has been me. regularly visiting me, yeah. has come to my, my place. So come what may, that boy must be up to something or I might be hiding somewhere. They had their own you know, suspicions. So not knowing when this boy, Emilia Sewabuzu, gave money and my passport to this boy, when he left the Gonda barracks, they were trailing him. <clears throat> they followed this boy to, lo to locate where exactly he was going and then they located a rabbi by this house. But they had their suspicions that I was in that house because that boy is somebody who comes to me quite regularly with the, the, the sisters. So they know mm -hmm. the Arab Badu's children mm -hmm. as my nephews. Yeah. So they followed this boy, Nana Kwame, who is still alive in Ghana, okay. to Arab Badu's house where mm -hmm. I was hiding with Kwame Atta. So when in that afternoon they didn't do anything. Then they retreat, retreated back to the Gonda barracks to pass on the information. So they organized us, you know, a mission to, 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 to come to uh, uh, during curfew time. So uh, we had eaten, we were sleeping, we had a lot of chats. Kwame uh, Atta's sister came to visit us. Everybody was happy, we were alive. So we were just about to sleep, about, around about nine o'clock. Uh, Mr. Andy, you won't believe. And I didn't believe uh, what happened. So all of a sudden, what I heard was a voice saying, no, first of all, they fired warning shots, like a rapid uh, shots from the ammo car. I have been trained as a driver and How a gunner. How many ammo cars were there? Four ammo cars. Surrounding the house. Surrounding a Ramabadu's house. They detailed four ammo cars to come and surround a Ramabadu's house where I was hiding with Kwame Atta. Okay. So, the person who shouted that, Kopunyamiche, come out. If you don't come out, we are going to kill you in this house. That voice is a voice I recognize very well because that person is somebody who taught me how to drive the ammo car. Who was that? I wouldn't mention his name on air, but he's somebody I know. He's right, even after, you know, after killing, helping Rollins to kill many, many, many people and try to kill me. He's come to seek political asylum in this country as a refugee as well. Okay. Can you believe this? I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> eh? I know somebody who is. was in but front, killing people to please his master Rollins, has followed us so in to, no, to seek not, asylum in this country. Yeah, not only was Adebuka, not only Adebuka that was betrayed, but I think a lot more. A lot more, a, a lot, lot more. more. But I'm, I'm talking only on my on part. part. Okay. It's, it's just a trivia, I mean, just a little part. Portion. When he shouted that, and he come said, out. Yeah, what, if you don't come out, you're going to die. So I told Atata, the voice I'm hearing is this man. She said, Kwame. So he shouted again. The house was silent. I remember Du and her children, they were, it was a two-bedroom house. So they gave one to me and uh, Kwame Atta to sleep in, and she and her three children were in the other. 
So after shouting about three, four times and giving the warning shots, all that followed was rapid fire, automatic rapid fire from the ammo cars. Firing directly into the house. So, so I said, Kwame, we are finished. And they had no idea. They had no idea. idea uh, but the they kids, had their. The, the, oh, they they didn't knew care. Rama Badu and their children were in the house. But they didn't care. They didn't care. They wanted to kill every life, every soul that was in that house. Just because. Just because of me. They weren't even sure Kwame Ata was with me. But they knew once that boy has gone to my house at the Gondavaras Bema camp and come back, surely I'm on the run. Quite an atro atrocious bay. I mean, couldn't they have just entered because they had the arms and, you know, verified the people inside? Look, before? this is a poor woman living in her exactly. house. So and even if you have suspicions you about enter. me, you have the guns. You, the guns. you surrounded you the house with enter four ammo cars. Arrest the people. Why the killing? Why don't you just open the gate or knock the door and come in and then uh, uh, effect an arrest. They should have, they could have succeeded if they did that. But the, f the intention they had was just to kill and destroy everybody in that house. So the rapid fire went on and on and from all angles. And you know, God is merciful and I thank God for everything that he has done for my life. When the shooting was going on, unexpectedly, rainfall started. Heavy rainfall started. It started raining, and they were firing through the rain. So, at this point, I told Kwame Tata, the way, because the whole ceilings were falling on us, because this ammo car, this 20 mm bullets. So you were, where were you hiding? We lied down. Yeah. And the bed? So no, no, flat on the on the on the on the ground. Okay. We 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 were sleeping on the bed. As the firing started, we moved from the bed, and then lied flat on the floor. So I told Kwame, Ata, I said, Kwame, the way these guys, they they really mean, and they are sure we are in this house. So we must get out. He said, Kwame, how? They have surrounded the house with these ammo cars. I said, Kwame. If God says we are not to die in this house, I have that dream in me that we will go. He said, Kwame, how are we going to do it? So I, I mean, I don't know what came into me. Mm -hmm. I held the, 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 the two bars of the, uh, one of the windows. It's a, such a tiny window, but there were this, you know, how we do it iron back home, rods, iron, yeah. iron rods. Yeah. I held the two like this. Some power came into me, I pulled, and it opened like this. There was one ammo car directly firing from behind the window into the room. But you know, I'm a trained soldier, so I, I could see the level of the bullets. They were above us. So I said, Kwame, we have to go. He said, Kwame, we, they will kill us. I said, well, we are already dead anyway. <laughs> so we better, so <laughs> we, better, we better try. Yeah. If God says we are going to leave, we will leave. If God says this is the time we have to die, Rollins will specify our blood to his gods as he pleases, like he's done to many other souls in the country. Was it an awkward at the time? Huh? Rollins, I mean, with the bloodshed. What do you of think? course, he is the commander-in-chief, and they will not do such operation moving for Amokai from the Gondabar without his, without his uh, you know, approvals. You can't move, and it was a curfew time. You can't move Amokai. But it wasn't just Rollins, it was Chikata who was also Chikata a was, yes. He, there, Chikata and Rollins is one, <laughs> two names in one body. Right, so they are, whatever that happened in that country, is the two of them. They have the uh, well, chief operation officer Kwashiga and then Major Bedema was there. But, well, they were all taking orders from them. Whatever that happened in Ghana, they cannot say they didn't know. No, they know because they give the command. Four armor cars will not move from Gonda Barras without notifying Chikata as a security officer or Rollins that this is the operation we are going to conduct. Uh, the armor cars cannot just move out of Gonda Barras like that. Couldn't, couldn't, they be, have, couldn't they have been acting on their own accord? It's impossible. Uh, I'm a soldier. I, I'm a soldier. You can't move an armor car without an order, an approved order. That's, the, the, an operation is to be executed. And if it, the, the, it is not, the approval has not been given, you can't move an armor car. So moving four armor cars to so a Ramabadu's house, house 
was so an approved, approved operation. operation. Right. So when, when you managed to go through that window? So in the course of the firing, the rain, the rain, rain started. Right. So but there was still firing. They were fi the, the firing was rapid. It was rapid firing that they didn't stop. It will fire from that side, that angle will stop. And I mean, they have positioned their four ammo cars mm -hmm. just to bring that house down, to kill, make sure every soul that is in that house was dead. But God is great. No soul or life was touched. I managed, I jumped out of the window. I, when I fell down, because when the gunner is firing, he, well, he, there's no way he can hear anybody whispering. The noise is so great. So, it was raining. I don't know whatever blinded them that they couldn't see me coming or out of that window they were firing through. I fell down. So I said, Kwame, come down, come down. I said, Kwame. I said, come. I held his hand. I pulled him down, and he also fell down. So the ammo car was positioned like that. We crawled and went through, being between the, you know, the, the, the ties of the ammo car. Rose up behind the ammo car. I started running and they continued firing. The same house. At the point, you and your friend had escaped. Kwame Atta. Kwame Atta had escaped. I remember you and, his, and her kid. We, we will come to the. <laughs> were they still in the house? <laughs> they were still in the house. Well, later part, when I had my life and I had to go to Ghana and meet a Rama Badu, she said, Kwame, I think you have a juju. I thought you were dead because her house was flattened. The whole roof of the house was brought down on them. We, we, will get, we get to that. We will because get to that, that. That, that. That is a very serious concern. Yes. Uh, which has still not been addressed. No. Um, you, so you escaped through the bushes? So um, we started running. The ammo cars were just doing their job. Firing, firing, firing. I don't know whether they were short of, of ammunition before they went into the house to see if there was a living soul or whoever, whatever they came for. So according to Rama Badu, when we, I met her later, about 10 years later, when I managed to get to Ghana, mm -hmm. but from the moment Rama Badu saw me, may her soul rest in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. Saw me, she started crying. She said, yeah, Kwame Minuya, Onyamin Kumo. So I also started crying. She said, Kwame, do you know what this PNDC people did to me and my children? I said, no. He said, the house was flat on me and my children. And Kwame, after they fired for, I said, they fired for about one and a half hours. When we were even far away, we could see here the firing going on. So according to Arama Badu, they came in after about one hour firing. Well, the, the, all the main gates, everything had been broken with bullets. Mm -hmm. So they walked in and started shouting if there's uh, uh, somebody in the house. Yeah. So they kept quiet. Right. I remember, according to her, she and her children were, went under her bed mm -hmm. and they kept quiet. They were there. So they were searching through, there were two rooms. They went to where myself and Kwame Ata were. The room was empty. There was nobody there. We had already gone. So they went to the second room, and then after pulling whatever they have fired to fall on Rama Badu and her children, Rama Badu said, we are wahao. She said, I said, we are wahao. And then they, 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 they handcuffed, I mean, uh, uh, the hands of them. They pointed the guns at them. He said, he said, don't kill me. It's me, Rama, the musician. I'm here with my children. Don't kill me. So they brought her out. He said everything in the house was destroyed because the ceiling has fallen. And then they pulled her and her three children out from under the bed and asked her, where is Nyameche? She said she couldn't speak and she didn't know why she didn't speak. And she didn't know why the children didn't speak, whether I was in the house or not. Mm -hmm. Because from where she was standing, she could see the room in which I was with Kwame Atta. I mean, everything was uh, it's like the whole ceiling has fallen. They fired and the whole, like the, the building has collapsed. So she knew probably they might have killed me 
or whatever. She didn't know what was going through. So they asked her, where is Nyamiche? She said she, did, she couldn't speak. None of the children, because they were so scared to death. Okay, so... They went into that room, and according to her, they, 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 they tried to pull everything out of the room, thinking probably still in there. We, somebody or I was still on that, that bed in that room. And she said she stood and watched silently with her children, and they brought everything, they pulled everything. They said there were about 20 soldiers, well-armed soldiers, some of them with masks in their faces, killers. After they said the room, they didn't see anybody there. Then they said the commander, whom I, the guy who commanded them to that operation, who I know very well, who is in this country, who has come to seek asylum in this country, United Kingdom, and has been granted. After all these atrocities, he has followed us. The souls he wanted to destroy to come and seek asylum in this country as a political refugee. And God watches, and he's the right person to give vengeance to such a person. Upon all the blood killing, unnecessary killing, he's so bold to follow us because Rollins didn't reward them. If Rollins didn't reward Adebuga, you, how much is he going to reward you? The one who brought him to power, he tried to kill and destroy. How about you, who just a driver and driving him up and down? So when they didn't see anybody in that room, Rama said, she, she gave a brief in. And she then asked them, why have you come to destroy my house? They wouldn't tell her anything. So they said, uh, they, then they asked the boy, they, that they saw him at the Gonda Barrack. How old were these boys? He, this Nanakwami was about 11 or 12 years Young at that goodness. time. Young boy. So they asked him, the musicians who knows him, the musician who played in the same group with me, who knows this Nanakwami I'm talking about? Ask, question that boy that. We saw you at the barrack today. That's why we have come here. We thought your uncle, Yamiche, is here. So they said it to the hearing of a Ramabedi. Okay. So that, that gave her the clue that Good when idea. the boy went to the barracks, they followed him. Hmm. So a Ramabedi said, so you have come to look for Yamiche. You have destroyed my house and you tried to kill me and my children. Mm -hmm. Where is that Yamiche you have come to kill? Mm -hmm. So they would not say even they are sorry because there was no even a door or gate to be shut because they've destroyed everything with guns. So according to Rama Badu, they just walked away and then moved the ammo cars and then just drove off. So where had you got into at the point um, in uh, terms of the escape? You already at the border? Or? We, when we got out of the house, when we got deeper into the bush, then I told Kwame Atta that, look, we shouldn't walk in pairs because should they discover any of us, that means the two of us are going to die. So I will advise he try as a soldier maneuver to get into the house of her sister who is living around Medina there mm -hmm. because he knows how to locate her sister. Okay. He was really frightened, mm -hmm. said, no, Kwame, these guys are going to locate me and kill me. And I said, look, Kwame, look at what God has just brought me and you out of. Mm -hmm. So if you stay here till daybreak, somebody might see you and raise an alarm. Mm -hmm. So try and maneuver. That was the last time I heard of him until later part we all met in exile. He was in Togo and I was in Ivory Coast. And then my journey was to go and locate for my save and savior, Nanakwami Ampedu again. That's the name that came to your, to your is, mind at the time. That is the name that came into my mind. So you departed Medina. So I started walking from Medina to uh, Adabraka. You can imagine, that is where Nanakwami house was. How can I Somebody, these people are after to kill. How can mm. I reach this place? Right. So there was a lot of strategies I adopted. What, what were some of them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Give us some of the, the, the tricks. 
how, how, because well, some of them are strategies that. I would I like mean, to we, show some people. Maybe, maybe if I, 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 I should just, say it on air. Right. Uh, in, in future, if somebody is adopting the same style or system, <laughs> they may locate and kill him. We will sue them for copyright. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I walked through the bushes. It was curfew time. And uh, you have to go through burials upon burials that they have mounted. But I wasn't walking on the main street. Well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a trained soldier, so I know how to maneuver. So, but at some point you reach, especially at Legon, there was a big checkpoint there that I don't know how, because there was no way you could trespass without going through the checkpoint. And God being so good, the rainfall continued to pour heavily. It was raining Again. heavily. Yeah, started. It was raining. I was drenched. Was it the same day? The same night, the on same the 20th of on that June. same night? Same night when they attacked wow. us. Wow. Yes. So we have escaped from the house. I have advised Kwame Atta to try and locate his sister. And I was finding my way. In case I survived, I will tell the story. In case he survives, he, tells the he story. must tell the story. What okay. has happened to us in a Rambabadu's house, God being so good, he saved the two of us, and we are all alive to tell our story today. So when I reached, about, it was about 12.30 midnight when I reached at Legon. I have walked from Medina all the way to Legon checkpoint that I have to cross to come to Accra. So... On reaching the about 200 meters to the uh, 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 checkpoint, well, I, I, I looked up to God and said, God, this is an obstacle I have to cross. Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. am I going to cross this yeah. obstacle without these guys identifying and killing me? Mm -hmm. So what came to my mind that, Kwame, undress yourself. I don't know why it came to my mind. And I swear to my life. That's the way you describe it. Everything. Yeah. I undressed myself. And how, what Nana I did. Nana went naked? Nana went naked. Wow. For his life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to be naked to, you know, I don't know why that, thing, it just came to me. Look, I said, as a composer and a songwriter, you know, that's how God sometimes gives you something to write about. It came to me that now undress yourself. So I took everything. I, I undressed myself naked. And I have to tell you, I, I, I took some mud on the ground, yeah. trying to camouflage myself, but it was raining. So, yeah, so the more I put the mud on myself, the, the rain washes it, it away. Okay. And I kept doing it. I kept doing it. Putting the mud on all over my body, naked. And then I was walking towards the, 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 the checkpoint. Then one of the soldiers called me to halt because it was a curfew to hours. Then one of them. So don't mind him, he's God, mad. God, God <laughs> is mysterious and manifests himself in so many, many ways. ways. So one of the soldiers said, oh, but don't you see this guy is a madman? Madman who's, don't you see he's naked? Have you ever seen a curfew <laughs> catching a madman before? Yeah. <laughs> My gracious. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are great and you have to be adored. Brother, at this point, I'm crying. Yes, because I don't know why God gave me that idea to be able to really beat these guys. And it became an argument between the two of them. He said, no. Well, Were you still acting as I a was, madman? I was going, yes. I was still gathering the mud on the floor and putting them on myself. And I was facing them. And the other guy said, this is a madman. Come on, don't you see he's naked? So the other was, oh, yeah, it's true, true. So like, you have to be careful. This is, you know, there, there, there are some people on the loose. So I thought maybe it's one of them. I said, but this is a madman. I walked past through this gate. Checkpoint heavily about 10 soldiers. There were about six of them there with their raincoats. They handsoft me, and one of them said, No, this is a madman. 
I managed to bypass them. That was the act. That you was were, the you, act. You were just so taking mad from the mad ground, from the floor from, stuff, from every. While they were still arguing, they were still arguing. So I would just walked through the checkpoint. Well, this is a secret that shouldn't have disclosed this, this because is, I'm, I'm somebody you, might have amazing. somebody might have adopted this system to escape as well. <laughs> Who knows? But they this won't is make how it because yours is miraculous. God, it was, this was miraculous. So when I got behind them, I walked for about 500 years and I branched into the bush and I knelt down and I looked up and said, oh God, you are really great. You are to be worshipped. You have to adore you, Lord. Because I don't know why even it became an argument between these soldiers that one was ready to shoot and the other was telling him, but how can you shoot a madman? So, that is how you that cause, I could bypass the checkpoint and then to the other end. Thank God. So, I started walking. It was raining. Before I could reach Nana's house at Adabraka, at Adabraka it was about 5.30 a.m. in the morning, which was still curfew hours. Because curfew, you know, it goes over at 6 o'clock. Uh, a madman has come to knock at Nana's main gate. And in Nana's band, I have a very, very good friend who, who was Nana's bassist called Opa. Hmm. I've been going to him anytime I go to Nana's house before I had my troubles. Yeah. I went to his room. His room was actually sent to the main gate. So I started knocking the door. It was still a few hours. So uh, there is no way they would dare come out and open gate because they know soldiers are patrolling around. Yeah. And if they should see them, probably that time people were dying. They yeah. were killing people. And some soldiers are on the loose and they have been declared wanted. So a lot of things were, according to Opa, was going through his mind. But the knocking went on and on and on and on for about 30 minutes until 6 o'clock. Then <coughs> he emerged. From his room. I know him. I saw him. He was the one coming Opa. He was the basis of Nana Kwame Ampedu. So he he came to the gate. He didn't open the gate. He 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 heaved through the gate and said, Who is there? I said, It's me, it's me. He said, Who? So when he saw he he he, he saw me naked with this by that time it had stopped raining, but the mud was all over my body. Okay. And he said, But a madman is knocking at the gate. He went in and tell the engineer. No, he didn't okay. go to Nana. He, the engineer of the band is called uh, Padonko. Okay. He was adjacent to Opa. So I saw, because when you are standing at, at, at the gate, you could see, you know, below inside. So I think he went and told Opa, Opa, uh, Donko, somebody is knocking at the gate. But when I went to see, he said, my kind of, my madman naked, standing right. behind the gate. Because I wouldn't like to mention my name in case maybe somebody were here. So he eventually came to open the gate. Then I went in. Then he was running back. Said, "When he, I said, Opa, I'm here. I'm here. Hey, your name is all over the radio. They want to kill you." So he was perplexed. He didn't know what to do. I said, "Opa, please save me. I'm here." Now, then why naked? Say, see, into me can have my for my mom and share. So he 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 hurriedly walked me into his room. Lock slammed the door behind him and went to notify Nana Pedu that, Nana, this is what has happened. Your son, Nana Dumakun Yamiche, is around. Is around. He said, Nana was, he said, according to Upa, Nana has been really thinking because the moment Nana heard my name on the radio, mm -hmm. he don't know why me sh should get involved with this. Mm -hmm. Because he knew what I was doing in the army. Yeah. I was actively engaged with my music. So Nana never thought, you know, in a second that I would ever get involved with anything like this. So the moment Nana produced, uh, started to hear my name on the radio, according to the uh, Opa, Nana was really worried. So when he went to tell Nana that I have come to the house, she said, it can't be. Kwame, I thought maybe he's dead by now. Because that time they have started publishing our names. My picture was on the front page. 
And my name was all over the radio all the time with other soldiers who have escaped. So Nana never thought it could be real. So when Opa, the bassist, my best friend in the non-produced band, went to tell Nana Pedro, Nana summoned all the musicians in the house. And then he summoned a, a, a brief meeting to tell them that they have to save me. They have to protect me because they all know me and how, I mean, I'm, you know, you know, musically influenced by him as and as a friend to open the basis. And I'm like a family member of his band. So they must protect me and save me. Wow. So Nana came to the wow. room to see me. And, and then spoke to you. Uh, at, at the house after you've met Nana, how did you then get over? That's a long story Give, also to let, follow. Yeah, let, let, I know <laughs> there will be about four <laughs> sort of segments to, to run through. Yes. So N N Nana did, N what, at that, at, was, was Nana still the, the, uh, the chairman of the music guard? But, but then Nana wasn't. Wasn't, okay. Yes. Because I think music guard had then started to, to, to during the, the so called revolution and the coup d'etat, the music guard has started. They have then just started to put things together for okay. it to exist. Okay. So it wasn't properly existing at its, as it's today or oh, as it a, used to be later. Too. So yeah. Nana wasn't the president at the time. He oh, wasn't wow. active right. you know, at his peak at the peak time at in the Ghana. Time. Right. I think, Nana, you said quite a lot. So from when Nana saw me, what he said is they should give me, send me to the bathroom and give me water to, to wash and then give me some clothes to wear because I was naked. Right. So after sending me to the bathroom, they gave me soap and, and water to wash. So Opa, this basis, because I was naked, I had nothing. So his dress, he gave me trousers, he gave me a jeans, jacket, a coat I will never forget. It, it is still in my box. <laughs> Wonderful the jacket man. that I wore to escape from Nanam house, house before the journey of exile started. started which we'll also speak about later. All right. I think we will have to invite you once more. All right. Uh, to talk about your journey mm -hmm. from Nana's house into exile. Wow. And when you went to Cote d'Ivoire, Nana's house to my, uh, uh, to how I got Nana delegated people to lead me through the bush till they got me a lorry to take me to Kumasi. From Kumasi, how they organized to get me a lorry to get it to my family and then went to hide me and then from there, I prepared to get out of the country. It's another long story, oh, too. Which we'll be talking about. <laughs> That's all right. If you wouldn't mind, I mean, and for the sake of Ebony. All right. Uh, Ramabudu, mm. uh, Akobo, CK. CK. CK, man. Would you give us a nice tribute? In probably. All right. So. Kanyamaye. Kanyamaye, all right. right. Which was my first song Ghanaians heard. Okay. Nipa Wutamiye. So back at me once more, I dare to dream my dopeia. Can you hear my yo? I be sending pa boni ni biya wey, ne hon krabi a yadu a so. So we na me ni ma wa, I be ena me ye ma upiya. Why a ba ba wa? When ni ya wari e hono, unso kami nyongo pa ni wa. Me no na ko na ye banwa, ma ba ma jina, me ni mi kunu bi a meriwa nui bo, ena me wui, eni eni biro e ye wanti no, upese upi chwe chwe mi na se, hmm, di chira oberi me ya o, amase o chine bi, so enya ti ase ni ya, ya bo musami ya, hmm, ma di chine bi uberi ya, na wa yi mi ya si wa o. Ama mene wabe yepe. Eh, onyonko boni ya e. Mori mawati ya siyese. Eh, agura na mene ugura o. Agua na mene ugura o. Ne mumi ye ya menye mawa o. Let's finish this here. Nana, that is an amazing song. Thank you, sir. My host, Patricia, had missed a great deal. 
Really? I mean, um, yeah. Right. I, I think she <laughs> loves your tunes. She <laughs> loves your track. Really? And I think she might be wondering, wow, mm. wow. Mm. But hey, Pat, you've not missed a lot. Uh, Nana will the, come back more again. Come. Nana will come back <laughs> again. And we will be talking more about your escape. All right. Nana, I would like you to use this opportunity to thank Nana Padu because I am honored to even hear his story and how he was able to help you through your escape. Uh, I don't know amount of words that I can or an adjective to use to qualify because if I am living today, besides God, I owe my precious life to from what I'm telling you, if he had betrayed me, if he has given me up, I don't think I will be living. But Nana put me, he kept me in his bosom like one of his own, protected me and organized for me to get my life. And I'm living today. I ask for a more, more, more many years. God should give him more years to live. I have a great testimony to testify before God and man that Nana is a good man. Politics is something that we came to, you know, get ourselves involved with. But from what he has done to me, I think it's a great testimony for everybody to see that he is a spirit. I put him, he is an angel because very few people will do what he did for me. Because that time, if Rollins and his Chronics have realized the least that I was near Nanam Ampadu. I don't think he would have lived. They would have straight away destroyed him, Pardon. just like they did to a Ram Ampadu's house. Yes. So I thank Nanam Padu and I ask for the Lord to continue blessing him, to give him more years to live. And if God gives me the chance one day, I will honor him. Nana, thank you very much. You. And you will honor him. He will live long to hear your testimony. All right. Um, thank you guys for staying in tune. It is none other than the legend, Nana Aduma Kunyameche. We are still keeping you in a way of the most controversial tracks and the new album that will be launching soon. Thank you very much and keep it locked on IDD TV, same time next week. Bye. Thank you very much.